welcome on behalf of Ajureka. I've been in the IT industry close to 20 years and I'm an alumnus of Mumbai University. So I think the topic today is Python logging system and I'll cover the different facets or aspects of Python logging system. So here's an agenda quick engine. What is Python? I'm sure a lot of your Dan uh, would know what is Python. Now the Python features, a logging system, and prerequisites, objectives. So you will see a demo of it as well. All right. So here's a plan out of this session. First, I'll go through some theory in this deck. After this, I'll show a quick demo of uh, how the login screen will look before I actually delve into the code part. Right. So what is Python? It's a scripting and programming language, and I I'm sure everybody would know it's one of the most popular uh, languages, programming languages, scripting languages out there. Just a small fact, it is, I know some of these things are not very important from the technical, but it's, it's, it's a good icebreaker, a good thing warm up by having this kind of slides. I am not sure whether you know the origin of this name Python, so it was based on some comedy troupe called Monty Python. It's not the Python the snake that you see on most of the cover pages of, in fact, all the books, right? So it's not the snake, it's actually based on a comedy group. So it's, it's a light fact. One of the best things about Python is uh, it's, the syntax and everything is easy. I'm sure most of you would have seen a Python code. So see any, any programming language, reading and writing takes different effort, right? Reading is always easier. Even if you learn a new language, whether programming or our own language, reading is always easier. The writing is always complex. The one best thing about Python is, even if you don't know Python much, if you read a Python, you will understand a lot of things. It's very intuitive. And that is what it means, easy syntax. To write, yeah, you need some practice, but to read, it's quite simple. So features of Python. So simplicity, like I said, it's very simple to understand. So there are a lot of libraries, a lot of features on top of it. But the core, it's very easy to understand, very intuitive. And once you have some practice, you will find you would prefer it compared to a lot of our traditional languages, programming languages out there and for writing code. It's an open source. So yeah, you can install it's out there for everyone and you can uh, use it for commercially as well. And there are package managers, libraries such as Anaconda. Uh, I'll come to that. Portability, uh, yeah, you can run it anywhere. You have a Python virtual environment or a Python interpreter. You install it somewhere. You can port co uh, your program. Even between the Windows machine and Linux machine, it's very easy to port without much hassle. So one of the most important feature of uh, Python is extensibility, right? So what it means is you can see one of the things with scripting languages, since it is interpreted, I mean, especially language like Python is interpreted, that is, some delay in um, executing. So it's not like you are compiling a code. So any compiled code will have a better run for performance. For example, if you write something in C++ and compile it, it will definitely have a much higher performance as compared to just writing Python. So one of the best things about Python is you can extend it by adding C library. So there's something called Cython. So what Cython is, is you can actually define the variables in Python using some commands like cdef. And then what happens is you can then compile it into a C program. It becomes a C program. But that C program you can directly import into the Python program just like and you would import any other Python program. What and these C programs are super fast. So basically, if you write a just to try your computer, if you write a for for logic iteration one million times, you write a Python and you write a Cython and then import that Cython, you'll see drastic improvement in performance when you run MC. So that, that extensibility is one of the uh, good features of Python. Along with that, there's so many libraries out there for Python. Uh, which can be imported. So that's, oh, I'll cover that in a moment. So it's an in interpreted language, uh, right? So yeah, if you write Cython, you can compile it as a C code, but essentially it's an interpreter. So in th there's an interpreter which looks at line by line each line of uh, Python and then executes and that there's an error, it will stop that. So it's an interpreted language and that makes it very easy to debug Python programs, one of the great advantages. Library, so this is, I mean, there are a lot of important features of Python, but I would say this is number one because there's a huge, open source community working on Python who supports uh, different kinds of libraries. So anything from socket programming to machine learning, deep learning, even quantum computing. So any new technology comes up, there'll always be a Python APIs or support for Python. And while there will be in each space, you will have another language competing with Python, but you'll see Python everywhere. And that is entirely due to the huge open source community who like Python and any new algorithm out there, for example, machine learning and deep learning, any new lab uh, algorithm comes out first, you will see a Python library made out of it before you see other technology. So that's one great, and that's the reason 
and we all want to go into Python or work on Python most of the technologies because that will be a library. It's not a silver bullet, right? You can't use it every place, but essentially a lot of the new areas like deep learning, machine learning, or as a, and if it's cloud computing, if you're working with AWS, they have a go-to library, or if it's quantum computing, Python helps a lot. The last part is it's you can write it as a procedural language or you can write it as a object oriented, so it supports both flavors. All right. Who uses Python? Yeah, so that's a, a question that I just answered a moment ago. Across different application, they'll find uh, you are users of Python and just uh, in terms of different organizations and companies using that. So now what is the login system? It takes inputs from users, right? This is the login screen. You enter an email ID, user ID, password, you log in. And then uh, if you don't have an account, you sign up. Uh, this is all a login system is. And there are a few facets, uh, aspects of it, which I'll explain as we move on to the demo part. So prerequisites for a login system, right? So what are the different blocks that comprise a login system? So you have a login form that you just saw a moment ago, then a registration form for signing up. And uh, why I'm rushing through some of the slides is because you all could be familiar with what a login scrum, what is sign up, because so everything, every application nowadays requires some kind of sign up and login. So uh, the third part is where uh, the database integration for login authentication, yes, uh, that's where all this information, all the user records are stored and the HTTP methods to access, I'll come to that. So login system project objective. We will be using Flask framework, right? So those of you who are not aware, it's a micro framework to build Python web applications and it also comes with a lightweight uh, web app server, web server. And that you can, I mean, Flask get, is embedded with a lightweight uh, web server and uh, you can actually host web application on using Flask framework. So one thing what Flask is, it's very lightweight. It's very easy to understand, but, and it's also very extensible, which means the footprint of a Flask framework is very, very light. What I mean is very small amount of code will be there in a Flask framework, but you can add a lot of other libraries like security or database on top of it and make it complete framework with all the features of a framework. And the competitor to Flask in this space is Django. So Django and Flask, these are the top two uh, web frameworks web server, uh, and which host lightweight web servers for hosting web applications in Python. Then database integration, there are multiple libraries, multiple connectors. You can use Flask, MySQL DB, you can use anything. And the URL, the, the web page, right? When you use, and I say URL, the web page uh, that you saw on the browser communicates with the web server, the Flask based web server written in Python using post and get methods. Uh, just hold on to this. And when you see the demo, I mean, you see the code, this point will get uh, much more clear, right? So login authentication, what all, entails in a login authentication. So you read the input from the login form, again, database connection. So database connection is basically to authenticate the users, authenticate and authorize, uh, send those values to database, and you will see all this in the demo as well as in the code. So this is sign up. You use me sign up, reading again, the same flow. Uh, there isn't much different, and you all know what a sign up is, but uh, you know, this is the same, same standard steps, except that you will be inserting into the database. So when you log in, you are reading from the database when you are signing up you are actually uh, writing into the database right so now let me show you a simple demo screen right so here's the thing okay so far i showed you a theoretical presentation a deck now we as human beings we understand better by visualization than just text right so let me just give a glimpse of what we will be building and then before we jump into the code so here's the login and sign up uh, screen right and uh, I'll just uh, put CR7. Let me enter credentials. So it's saying, welcome Cristiano Ronaldo, because that's already there in the database, right? So let me log out. So let me say some other user. I put an invalid password. There's an incorrect password for Messi. So here's the thing. See, usually in, in enterprise applications and all, the whole login screen, using different uh, technologies like uh, mostly javascript based angular or react js those kind of technologies but this is how we build a login screen for python so this session is about that and one thing i want to just mention is uh, usually you will not see this kind of error message in valid password for a user id because the thing is due to security whether the user id is incorrect or the password is incorrect you will get a generic message saying hey um, user id or password is invalid so that you don't tell the person who's logging in hey there's already a user id for this because this is useful for 
people want to do some mischief if they know there's a user id existing you can do it also just for demonstration i'm showing the incorrect password but usually you will get a message that whether it's user id or password will say invalid all right for example if i put something it will say invalid user now let me put the correct password for messi and it'll say welcome ali and messi so this is the profile page all right so understand this what you see here i just remember it if i grab the notebook and note down this is the profile screen right then i'm saying hey welcome and then i'm showing a logout screen i click on logout it comes back to login screen right this is another html login let's say i try to add uh, tony pro so so these are different football players if you don't know them so invalid user it's saying right so let me register i'll say plus let me enter the email id and then i'll set up some password that's it so sign up successful you can go back to login screen now let me log in plus right so it's saying welcome to any plus right so you have a profile page you have a login page and you have a new page sign up all right so this is what you will be going to see in the in the, in the code so now what what do you see here on the left let me show you here so you can ignore the first part the, so there's a login html right which is essentially on uh, the html page so let me just open it and see how it looks uh, i know all of you have seen html but uh, uh, just let me open with chrome so this is the your html on chrome now you'll see what is this gibberish don't worry i'll come to that but most of the uh, objects on the screen you know same thing that you have seen here okay so that's all the html is and uh, there are three main html's here login like i said this one login screen then the profile where it says hey welcome you know lionel messi and the sign up right new registration that i registered 20 cross okay so i don't want you to uh, i'll walk you through some of this code but i don't you know want to build it uh, as we walk along because this is something uh, you will get uh, so this application i have built for this particular session and uh, you you can uh, making this html is not a big deal but i'll focus on the python part of it all right so so i want to just want to show the flask okay i'm using a uh, flask micro framework here so this is a rough copy what i made is let me just show you flask before we jump into logging uh, part of the screen okay so this is all again a uh, boilerplate code what i mean is you have a flask library you, you import the the class from it and then you define the app so in this case name is actually Will be main, so you know, in any new program and you execute, uh, it will be main, right? So I'm. This is a standard code. So here is where you will find, you know, how uh, easy it is uh, to run Flask. Okay. So what you see here is something called decorators in Python. Okay. So de de decorators are kind of a wrappers around functions. So you have defined a function here, and just feed it to the decorator, right? And the decorator will actually make it an endpoint or a the url so this is a url that you see and you want to map this url to a specific function on the web server so this kind of mapping is done by you know, the decorator takes care of linking that url with the function so what i mean is if i put a slash it will say hey uh, written hello right so uh, i'm just showing this code to you know before you see uh, this code and it becomes very complicated let me show you the, the the smaller code right so i'm just saying uh, hello all right so here's the thing uh, let me just run this and probably you will be able to see it right so that's it i just run this program and you see zero, so localhost uh, so this is binding to some ip address zero, zero, but i'll see something on local port 5001 okay so let me see 5001 what do i have Hello, all, right on the on the screen. So what has happened is, I have said the URL is you know slash. That's it. It goes to this function, right? The browser sends um, the action to this particular uh, function, and it returns return hello all. That's it, and that's what you are seeing here. Now let's yeah, that's all. So now let's say I want to uh, build something. So let's say I will just uh, right. So I don't have a welcome page. So not found. This URL is not there, right? So I will just recommend it. So 
So I have started, uh, I'll change, change the code automatically. The server has to be started. So you can see below, right? So if you see, uh, let me use, okay. So you see, every time I make some change to the code, it restarts here. And then if I go, and then now I restart, welcome, right? So it's as simple as that. So that's the beauty of Flask. In 10 lines, you're already fired up a web server, okay? And uh, the last part, so you can have, you know, other something else instead of welcome and that you can put whatever you want and that's it. It's all done. And uh, this is just saying from the application a certain, you don't worry about all these are boilerplate code, but just say boilerplate code. But what's saying is bind to this particular IP address, which means uh, you can connect it from localhost or any other, there's a public IP to this server, then you can connect to that. So that's the part of about it, right? So that's about Flask. Now let me, show you the different artifacts, right? So let me quickly run through the HTML because this is more of a Python uh, web server or a login system. So let me, I'll focus on the Python side. Uh, let me just quickly show you some of the control fields. So I have a user field HTML, so you don't have no HTML. I'm just highlighting uh, certain parts of it, which, so if you see there is a user, right? Which you saw on the screen. So this user is that. Then there is a password, right? Which is again, you see password and that's it. And when I enter this, so what happens is, so let me switch back to my point. So when I hit enter on this particular web page, right, login or something, what happens? There is an action, right? This is inside a form object HTML. It's an action which says slash login, right? So when you hit enter on the HTML screen, it, it, it's, it's, it, the action is to uh, call a uh, endpoint slash login. And that slash login I have defined in my main program, right? slash login and it's a big code. So I don't want to uh, confuse you at this point of time. Okay, so let me uh, go step by step, but that's what happens. It, it comes to the login screen, right? Now, one thing uh, I'll cover each aspects of Flask, right? And how each each of this function helps you in defining or firing up the web server or serving the URL. And end of the day, we enter user, we enter password, we click login. It'll come to this particular uh, method. And then what happens is what we'll see, right? Now, before that, uh, let me show you this, right? So, so what I showed you earlier was a rough one, a simple 16 line code so that you can understand how simple Flask is. Now I'll come to the main code. Uh, initial parts, initial, it's all same, right? Instead of app, I'm saying main and uh, blueprint is nothing just like an application. So each application can be one. So if you have multiple application, there could be multiple blueprints. So you don't have to worry about all that. It's just that simplistically main is an app. That's why I say main dot route. So if I put slash on the browser, it should take me to the index. And what is the index doing? There's something called redirect, right? Uh, redirect means you have to, if there is nothing happening on the screen, it should redirect to the main dot login, right? So redirect URL for main dot login. Main is this name of the program. Okay, so redirect main dot login. Main is the name of the application and login is the name of the function here. Right. So what happens if I go back to the browser and I will not put any logins, anything. I'll just put slash. That's it. It still gets automatically redirected uh, to the login. Right. In case, let's say I have uh, put something else, right? Return. Let's say I heard uh, return render template. I'll tell you what render template is for a sign up dot HTML. Right. And I'll comment this out. So now what I'm saying, if I hit slash, right, it should go and render, uh, so render is a technical term. So it's just like rendering a template or rendering a HTML uh, on the browser. So if it's a slash, don't redirect to login. Just show me signup.html, right? So let me try that again. See, now it's not taking me to login. Now it is to bring me to a signup screen, okay? So it just, it's like one line you can move here and there. So that's some of the things, you know, Flask makes your life so easy, very easy on the respect. Let me restore the world to its normal order, right? So yeah, it goes to login, right? That's it. So now let's move on to the uh, the next part of it, all right? So for now, uh, let me just uh, create a copy of it or uh, let me create in the folder itself. I have a copy. In this main, uh, let me just remove it. And everything which is, what is there? And I'll come to that later, so, okay? So now what login, Happen when you, when I do login, this is what is happening. I'm uh, setting under template login.html, and that's why when I say login or whether it is whatever it is coming to this particular page, right? Similarly, new, right? 
new is a name that I have gave uh, for a sign up. All right. So if there is sign up request, well, let's say I say new. All right. So what will happen if it's new? I'll render this HTML page on the browser. So I'm I'm basically uh, returning this particular template or HTML to the main screen. Right. So I'll say new comes a register screen. Right. Similarly, there's a third screen that I said. Right. Profile. Now you are saying render template profile dot html so let me say profile and some user all right so let me just say profile saying not found right so now let's say i say messy right so see name full name and all is not that because it's expecting a full name right i'll say full name is equal to you know and now let me run it so uh, it takes a while so sometimes i'm saying welcome Lionel messi right so basically if i don't have any code i just say render 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 i'll see those pages okay but uh, that is so logout i'll cover later okay because once we com complete everything else we'll move on to the logout part right so now le le let's go uh, one by one right so when we are uh, logging in okay here i have put something called error right so for now you can ignore it i'll show it Towards the end, there's something called template Jinja templates uh, on HTML screens for dynamic rendering of web pages. So I know what I just said, but it looks, sounds very abstract. Hence, don't worry about error for now. You just see a render, a render template. Understand that a render template is to render a specific HTML onto the browser, and redirect is to direct it to some function, right? So I'm redirecting to this function, and this will do the rendering. Okay, uh, that's about it. Now there's one other thing i i want to touch upon right uh, called session okay so what happens is when you log in to a screen so your user your so, so some of your details are actually uh, stored in session variables or cookies so that's why you know in any application you go you go to multiple pages it recognizes it is you it doesn't ask you to enter your password at every every, every, at every step right so it holds some session information so that's something once you log in it is able to the, the application will tell you hey you are the so and so person so it will show all the uh, different pages in the web application that is why earlier when i typed in tony tony cruz and a logged in saying welcome tony cruz because the session variable is a session is a variable which still stores tony cruz and then until i say log out it will not clear the session variable okay and now nothing will happen because it's all i'm just still running with the uh, older code so it, 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 i just removed a lot of code but uh, i'm just saying uh, that takes you out Okay, the whole session for the whole session information is removed. All right. So uh, let me now talk about one other aspect in this main dot route. So like I said, this is um, this is a decorator on decorator function, right? This this works on this function, so it's a wrapper around the function. So one is the URL, other is the methods. Okay. So I'm not sure, you know, whether how many of you understand the post and the get HTTP methods, but let me talk about uh, that a little bit. So when we send a request from the front end to the server so either we do a get that means that we, i want to see some request from database so i'm i send a get request so i get me some details on the screen the other is the post where i'm submitting a form i'm submitting some details so it's a post and then it gets updated into the database variable so that is the post part of it and that's another aspect that gives so depending on it's a post or a uh, get we can do uh, different things okay now uh, le let me not write some code around it so let's say it's a login okay now when we log in what, what should happen so if you go to the login html right it says login and method post so i'm submitting the username and the password all right so i will go to main and i will just say uh, if request request is one of the um, uh, the the, the uh, methods or class uh, classes within the flask library right so when you submit certain information from the html page you can find it under request all right so this is a object which holds uh, all this uh, the, the different information uh, that is sent from the uh, browser so if you say method is equal to post because i'm saying it's a post request right so i'm saying if request is equal to uh, post let me take down those requests right let's say user is equal to user is a local variable so i'll say request dot um, request dot form that's that's the uh, 
so from so i'm submitting a form here let me go to the login html so i'm submitting a form right hence uh, you will say request dot form and then you will have user okay and then uh, i will take the password right same same syntax uh, request dot form so what is let me look at the password name so if you see uh, let me yeah user is uh, name is user and uh, password is uh, yeah psw right this is just about this hello psw so let me it is thanks yeah so psw so this is the password field all right and then uh, see here's the thing now fine the user has entered the user and the password but how do we know whether the user is existing or not for that we need database right otherwise how will the program know and that is where i'm just i introduce you to this particular mysql rdbms database that's what i'm using here okay you can use any kind of database uh, for holding this information but mysql is the common uh, it's also an open source and uh, it's pretty powerful so i'm using a mysql database uh, on aws cloud so this is not hosted locally i have hosted on the aws cloud and uh, i'll show you how the table looks because now that you have entered the user and the password someone has to go and verify in the database right so how to do that so that's where we have this let me open that specific show open editors so model.py all right so one thing is uh, just in the you know, interest of the time and in the depth of the subject i'll focus on the Cla flask web server but i'll just quickly run you through what this my model program does is it has a mysql api right and uh, it, there are some I'm giving four details, right? If I want to connect to a database, I need four details. One is the IP address. So this is the IP address, or in this case, it's called DNS, yeah, domain name system, DNS of the uh, MySQL database on AWS Cloud, the de database is dev, user ID is admin, and password, if you see, it's a big gibberish. And I'll tell you why it's a long gibberish in a moment. But let me show you the table. Right, so this is a MySQL workbench. This is also an open source tool uh, you can use to connect to MySQL database on your local or anywhere in the world, as long as uh, it's pub uh, you can connect it to, it has a public uh, DNS. All right, so this is the name of my table user. And if you see, I have four records already created, right? CR7, Kane, uh, Kane, Mane, and Messi. And the part, so this is how I check whether the user is existing in this table or not. So I'll just check the username is the primary key. I believe you know, I mean, I, I'm sure uh, all of you know what is a primary key. So there's a primary key and based on that, I check the record is existing. If it's not existing, I have to insert a row, right? That is how sign up happens. And if you see the password, it's all gibberish. Reason being, I'm actually hashing it. Never a good idea to save passwords, the true password in programs or in database. Hence, I'm using something called hashing. What is hashing? Yeah, that's again a separate uh, topic. But uh, just know for now that uh, whenever you send information in a secure website, right, your uh, your your passwords either get uh, encrypted or it get hashed, right? So that two ways. Uh, so encryption means you encrypt something, you can decrypt using same key somewhere else. Uh, in case of hashing, it's you, there is no unhashing kind of. If it's hashed, hash. You cannot extract the password out from a hash. It's just like Every time you know enter a new you enter a password, the program will apply hashing algorithm on that, and then it will go and check the hash value, and then it will say it's matching or not. But nobody can know looking at the database or the program saying, hey, what's the password entered? No way, because it's all hashed. All right. The other form is encryption, but with that encryption you can also decrypt using a key. Okay. So basically, uh, that is that that is what hashing the difference between hashing and encryption is. So I'll just uh, walk you through some of this. I'm connecting, there's a host, host, user, password. So what I'm doing here is, uh, instead of uh, hash, I'm using a de encryption decryption here. So I have, this is an encrypted value of the password. Crypt.decrypt will decode it, right? Decrypt is a decoding function. And I will not touch upon those uh, topics here, just so that not to confuse, but uh, crypt is another program uh, that I had written to encrypt and decrypt. So there are, uh, encrypt function, decrypt function, hash function, etc., etc. But not to worry, just know that there is a function which decrypts the password. And then in this model, model.py is the one that interacts with MySQL. That is why it has a MySQL connector imported. 
right? And it has a cryptographic module also imported. So this connection is established and there are a few methods. This is get row. Get row is saying, hey, select sal from user where username is equal to this. So this is what the login screen does, right? It has to go and query the table and say, hey, select me, a details from username and it'll execute. So this is all syntactical, okay? You don't have to worry much. See, one thing about is syntax, a lot of these open source technologies, you will find the syntax, everything on web, online, it's all out there. So you don't have to worry too much about the syntax. You will find that it's just about understanding what all libraries are there, what all functions are there, what all features are there, so that you can execute it. You don't have to buy hard anything. So this is the query, cursor.execute is saying just execute, right? And cursor is, again, you know, I have a connection variable here. So I'm connecting to MySQL, cursor is, uh, it's, it's another uh, handle from the, from the connection. And I'm executing that handle here, executing the query, and I get the row. And I'm reading the row. So this is just getting the row for me. The next one is something called user exists. Now I'm asking this program, this function, hey, does the user exist or not? And then the same thing it does, it says, model dot get row it calls this function and then it's saying if the row count is one cool at least the row is existing so it is taking the db password right what is the db password so i entered messy right and, I, and it's it sure it told me hey welcome messy because it was able to identify messy from the database so here it's saying hey database password is equal to something that something is coming from mysql table this is that something right for the messy this is the password and that gets retrieved here. And then what this program is che checking is whatever is fetched from the database, all the gibberish, and whatever I have entered on the screen, I'm hashing that. I'm hashing that password, generating a gibberish hashed. It's not a gibberish actually, I'm just saying it for simplicity, but it's a hashed password. And I'm comparing it to hash password. And if it's perfectly matching, I'm saying returning zero. Zero means all is perfect, all is well. I'm returning one when the user is existing, but the password is invalid. Right, user is that, but password I have put valid, and I am returning to when the user itself does not exist. All right, so that is what the model is doing here, and the user exists. So just remember, user exists is a function which says gets data from other database, validates the password, and returns. Get full name, well, it, as the name suggests, it's getting a full name. So full name is a, you see here, uh, you can see, I'm highlighted full name. Right, so full name is there, it just fetches the full name. That's it. There's not much into it. And then the last part is, maybe it's this marker, the last is add user. So where would add user be useful? Of course, for sign up. So I'm taking email ID, username, password, full name, everything. I'm applying again, hashing algorithm on the password. That's all I have to do. After that, I'm inserting it. Query, this is standard SQL. Okay, again, like I said, don't fret about the syntax and all. It's all you can find online. It's not a, you don't have to mug up that, mug up syntax. It's inserting into the table user with all the values, and then it's executing the query, and that's committing. That's it. So an SQL commit. That's it. And then uh, you have everything you need in the model.py, and that is the reason I have in the main I have imported from model. I am importing main function model, and from cryptographic I'm importing the main function crypt, and I'm using those two. So what I showed you a while, uh, just a moment ago is this model model program. All right. So just remember this is the handle we are using for logging in okay so i have taken the password right now let's say i save this okay i save this and now i will go to login let's see what happens sorry it's no login and login it's login right let's say i say uh, cr7 then i say cr7 which nothing happens right so i have a record and nothing happens that's because I removed the code, right? I deleted. I'm not doing anything. It's just saying render template. It's not taking me to the profile page. Earlier, what was happening it was taking to my profile page, saying, "Hey, welcome, Christian Ronaldo," but not now because I have removed the code. So let me add that code. So, but first, I have to know whether this user ID and password is valid, right? So I'll say, let's define some variable. And this is standard variable. You can use anything. And then model is the program that I mentioned, which contains the database calls and user. Yeah, user exists, I'm going to type, but because I imported, I can see a drop down. I click on it, user exists, and I pass uh, the two parameters, user and password. So so you can break your programs, functions, small, small pieces, right, always. So you don't have to worry about writing in one big code, everything, but this, it makes your uh, life easy in troubleshooting. So user valid is a variable which contains three values, zero, one, and two, right? 
So I said uh, zero means all is all is well. One is valid password. Two is well the user does not exist. So I'm checking that if user. So one thing. So all the IDs. One good thing about all these IDs is the variables pop up even if they're part of it. And you all know that already, but I'm just uh, mentioning it here. Okay. Uh, so I will just say return, and I want to re redirect it to the. So this is see here's the thing. All right, I can directly render the page, which is the profile page, right? I can directly render the profile page, or I already have a profile function here, which renders the profile page. So let me just redirect to this particular function. So that makes my life easy, right? So whatever I do in that particular function, this function will not get impacted. I can change that function only. Here I'm just redirecting, and I'm saying main is the name of um, main dot profile so that's all what i'm going to do and uh, that's one more thing so profile i also need a username right because like i said earlier if it's messy it should say Lionel messy or the user name we have to pass right uh, that's how it is able to render and uh, let, let's pass that username in this uh, redirect right so main uh, dot profile and i will say user is equal to user so this is what that's it all right so that's all uh, you have to do for if the user is perfect or the user is existing database. The next thing is if I the user is not, uh, let's say the password is invalid. Okay, in that case, I just uh, user is invalid. Let's say it's invalid. So the third scenario is the user does not even exist, right? And this here, uh, I will say user is invalid because user does not exist here. Password is incorrect for user okay so we, we just want to add that so let me reiterate it uh, it's a post function and then i have a request dot form a password user valid i'm checking if yeah user is existing i'm passing it to the profile page here i'm saying password is incorrect and last part is user is invalid when it isn't existing in the database right so that's all it is and then i'm entering the uh, login page so if let's say uh, the request is not post some other request it is it will continue to stay on the login page however the request is a post and the user is valid it will redirect to the profile page okay uh, let's run this let me restart if it's saying i've gone to the profile let me go to login so i will go to the initial login screen right so i'll say messy and i will enter the message let's may put a valid password login see now it has so earlier it was not going in and now it's going to the uh, profile page right because i am redirecting to the profile page if the user is valid so one thing is i entered just messy but how does it know Lionel messy that's because it's fetching the full name i actually have hard coded here but uh, in this case let me remove it right so I just hard coded because uh, to demo demonstrate, but uh, we can actually enhance this prefix page. So we have to update. So let me not put all that. Let me just go back, log out, okay, and let me enter Messi again, and we'll see what happens. So I'll say Messi, and I'll say yeah. So full name is not defined, right? There's no full name. That means the profile function is not complete. I need to get the full name. Then only I can display it, right? So let me do this. I will full name is equal to. So we saw right there is, was a function in model extract full name, get full name right. Okay, get full name. Fine. Model dot get full name. It gives me this. And then what do I have to pass? I have to pass obviously the user since that is the key. Okay. Now I am rendering the template profile dot html. F name is equal to full name. I am passing full name. But what is F name? Well, let's go to file html. I will look at the. Let me scroll once so that. You can see f name somewhere here in the profile yeah so as you see uh, let me highlight it f name so it's saying welcome f name right and that is what uh, full name getting passed here okay so now you will wonder what all this open braces and all are i'll come to that in a moment right so now i go to main i have set the full name full name is equal to model get full name I'm passing the parameter now let me restart the server or so it gets auto restart every time I change the program. Okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm just uh, paying some data with a valid password and saying welcome all uh, Lionel Messi. And just so that you don't think uh, there is some kind of trick here, I'm gonna put Harry Kane. Right, so password is incorrect for Kane. All right, 
Kane is existing, but I put an invalid password for it. So saying welcome Harry Kane. Why? Because Harry Kane is there in the database. Harry Kane full name, right? As you see here, second row. So we have basically constructed uh, the from the login to the profile page. Okay. Now let's quickly go to the sign up or sign up page, right? So what happens when I say new? It takes me to the sign up page, right? Now let me build. So this is where it comes. Right now nothing is happening, right? If I say sign register, let me fill something something. Nothing is happening because I don't have any program here, right? I don't, haven't put any code. Now I have to do. I have to add a user. The moment there is a sign up request, right? I have to add a user. So that's what the new function will do. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is, yeah, we are checking if the uh, see again when you go to the sign up page. When you go from login screen to the sign up page, you are just uh, showing an empty screen. But once you enter the details and submit, and then you click on register. It's a post HTTP method, right? Post. So you're entering submitting data to the backend server, right? So let's put it as post, right? So if um, so, what is that request dot method? The same code that we had earlier, right? So we are just we're looking at the request variable, we're posting it, and now here's the thing: we have to get the details. So all the four details that we are going to fill. Because if right now, if I say uh, Andre, Andre is Andre existing? Andre is not existing. So I'll say Andre. Okay, it's already there in the cache. So I'll say theory Andre and nothing happened. Why? Because I haven't I haven't written full code. So here's the thing. I'll say now let me put that code uh, request dot form right user password is equal to request dot form uh, PSW sorry password and uh, email is equal to request dot form email and the last part is what full name full so this can be any name okay is the local variables but one in the square bracket should be coming from html yeah so that's what i did now what i'm going to do next is i have to insert this right so i'll say model dot add user that was the function right so in that uh, add user we'll have to pass uh, multiple variables let's let me use the arg uh, star org can email so what order i am expecting the model add user oh, okay email id user password and full name all right email id user password and uh, oh, sorry full name so i'm passing the uh, and let me get some it returns some status right so anything anytime we add anything we need to Check for the uh, status here. There are two statuses. If the insert is successful, I'll get zero. Uh, if there is an error, I'll get two. And if the user is already existing, then I'll get a return one, right? So zero means everything is cool, right? So let me just say status status is equal to model. This status uh, the SQL code basically. Yeah, that's the term. Uh, let's call it SQL code. Then It'll be better. Otherwise, it can mean something else, right? SQL code is equal to zero, so everything is perfect. Okay, when everything is perfect, now you'll think, what am I adding now? Flash. Okay, so the flash is another way, another library within Flask to show messages on the HTML. Okay, it's as simple as that. You just have flash. You put some messages inside it, and you are good to go. And you can say, use, yeah, sign up. You can just sign up. Successful. Yeah, go back to login screen because we have to direct that. That is one thing. Then I have uh, if else if SQL code is equal to one. When SQL code is equal to one, and we are saying what is one 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 means the user is existing. User is, user is existing. Okay, and uh, only thing is we'll just say user is existing username. We have the username. Elif. And uh, this is another good thing about all these IDs. It will tell you if there's an error right right away. And then flash. If the user is not existing, yeah, some or insert failed. It could be anything. Server not available, right? Server issue. Again, put something of that sort. And that's it. So now let me run this program. Sign up. Okay, refresh. So this time when I enter some okay, so render a template. Sign up dot HTML. There is some syntax error. I'll return under template sign up.html. 
right so i have to add something here uh what's it saying so that is an issue I'm just troubleshoot it quickly sign up successful skill code is the model dot add user user is equal to user password sign up dot html okay and uh, this is sign up dot html okay and uh, let me just it should not matter but maybe it didn't get refreshed okay so indentation problem it's saying sql code else lf sql code right so let me see um, okay sorry i did some indentation problem so that's something you have to be careful with python right i just put some space additional by mistake and some problem through me error okay but again that's fine uh, all those ids will show all those errors so that's really nice of it so let me now try to register theory andre and uh, let me put the password right so user is already existing why because i have already registered theory andre in the past right saying so let me try i'm just executing the query here in the database so this is a mysql workbench so this is a good way uh, to know what all date and uh, you know, values are existing so henry is already there okay um, so we are short of players okay roni is not there let me put roni roni uh say okay let's put that the cash paint roni and that's it password yeah success sign up successful go back to thing go back to logic sorry and then roni and that's it so uh welcome vain roni so basically what we are seeing is um, most important login screen and what it does you saw it takes input and checks validates and returns message accordingly then you have um, the new which is sign up just now we saw so you saw this sign up successful message at the top which gets flashed and then the profile page where it says welcome so these three uh, we have seen we haven't seen logout but uh, i think uh, so here's the thing okay i haven't introduced uh, doing while i was walking walking you through the code i didn't introduce a session variable uh, just so that i didn't want to make things complex session variable is where we have to hold some values of the user or the, at the client side or maybe a server side but usually there are multiple ways but we store it at the client level the client side uh, session information and then uh, if you want to log out we have to remove it from the session variable so just let me not make it more complex because it's not entirely uh, relevant this part but just know for that and uh, one last part that i want to show you is we are actually making this uh, there's an init program right this initialization program which actually calls the main program so i showed you main program but uh, init program is the driver this is where the entry point is so you'll see from flask same command except that there's one app dot secret key that you give when you start an application so what happens is when you send session information to the client side you need to encrypt it and code it so flask takes care of that that's why you give a secret key at the start the session information is all encrypted and then you are importing the main function that i showed you all along and then you are registering the blueprint blueprint is like i said an app uh, within main that's it so this is again a boilerplate code uh, it's uh, you don't have to worry about the standard code here is where main is where uh, i walked you through the various uh, the you know the maneuvering across the various screens you can control through, through main.py okay and uh, just to uh, reiterate quickly uh, whatever we have done so far or what are the important components of this uh, login screen like i said the init is initialization where uh, the control comes here and this function create underscore app is executed when you start the server and within that create you are setting a secret key you are importing the main and you are registering the app called main and once that happens main starts executing and main has different routes different urls and points which will serve the different actions on the uh, the ui side right the browser side and there are a couple of other modules model.py it adds user it gets full name it checks users all that stuff and there is one cryptography module uh, which is this again added in just uh, for this for encrypting decrypting the password that is enter, uh, entered right so there are two uh, passwords here right one is the database password other is the password that i enter as a user so as a user i can enter any password hence i'll hash it and store it in the database as a hashed value the database password i am uh, only i know obviously i should know and since i should not uh, expose it and 
in in on the open in the public so that's why i have the, the encrypted password and then i'm decrypting it while i'm connecting so and for decrypting and encrypting there is something called um, some keys so i'm using specific key so which i just i mean you can key your key and you can encrypt it doesn't matter but i'm just saying in real time application you will have this kind of encryption and decryption right and then hashing so these are the uh, different uh, modules you don't have to worry too much about model and cryptography uh, this is where the heart of the program is and this is what i would recommend suggest to go back and have a look this this is the main part of it all right so thank you very much have a good day bye